how do we measure the potential of a half cell? We've already noted that a working galvanic cell requires two half cells. And so if we have any hope of measuring the potential of a half cell, we have to define that with reference to some kind of standard electrode. For example, I could define you know, this pen as having a potential of zero volts and hook up a bunch of half cells to it and measure their potentials relative to this pen. Now this pen has no electrical driving force within it, but you get the idea. And list those voltages with respect to this pen as a set of half cell potentials. This is essentially what we do to define the standard electrode or what we'll call standard reduction potentials, being a little bit more careful throughout this video and the ones to come. So I want to talk a little bit about how this works in an actual context. So the, the basic idea is that we imagine we want to measure the potential of, let's say, this copper half cell and this silver half cell and this lead half cell. And so what we do is we take the copper half cell, and I'm going to try to pull it out here as best I can without pulling anything else out. We take the copper half cell out. There we go and we hook it up to some kind of standard half cell, right? I, I hook it up to my standard, and I'm just gonna represent the standard in a box. We're gonna call it the standard hydrogen electrode, and so I'm just gonna call it the she. And the she has a potential that is defined as 0, 0.00 volts. And we can hook these up, use a salt bridge, do all the galvanic cell rigmarole, and we can measure the voltage of the copper side. And that measured voltage is the standard potential. I'll sometimes represent this with an R or a red subscript. The standard potential of the copper half cell. And I'm actually going to change the coloring here because the standard cell potential is conceived with respect to reduction of that electrode, not oxidation. So we're thinking about the copper half cell as the cathode here rather than the anode. And this is actually an important convention since the standard hydrogen electrode, as we'll see, kind of shows up in the middle. There are potentials that are positive and negative with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode. So we essentially imagine forcing electrons in this direction. And we ask, first of all, is this spontaneous? in which case the reduction potential will be positive, or non-spontaneous, in which case the reduction potential will be negative with respect to the she. And we can measure the potential of this galvanic cell constructed of our standard in orange and our half cell of interest. And of course, we could replace any old half cell with the copper and, and copper nitrate, right? We could swap out the copper for lead. We could swap out the copper for silver, any other metal, any other redox pair, right? Any other combination of reduced and oxidized species that can be interconverted via electron transfer. This is the basic idea of measuring electrode potentials. Our standard anode that we use to measure reduction potentials, standard reduction potentials, is known as the standard hydrogen electrode, or as I like to call it, the SHE, standard hydrogen electrode. The standard hydrogen electrode is called as such because the half reaction that occurs in this half cell involves the reduction of H plus to form H2, two electrons should be added here, or the oxidation of H2 to two H plus and two electrons on the product side. Now, so let's take note of that. This is an oxidation and this is a reduction, but because we are defining the potential of this half cell as zero, both of these processes are associated with the standard potential of zero. And what we do to measure the potential of a cell of interest is hook this in with another half cell and measure the potential of the resulting galvanic cell, treating this as the anode. So we're thinking of the she typically when measuring standard electrode potentials or standard reduction potentials 
as the source of electrons as the anode, right? Such that electrons are flowing out of this wire and into our galvanic cell, our half cell rather, of interest. Now, let's dig into the Xi on a little bit more, uh, on a little bit of a deeper level here. So we've seen the half reactions. It's the reduction of two protons to form H2 or the oxidation of H2 to form two protons and two electrons. And a inert platinum electrode is used in the Xi. We can see it right here. And this is helpful because one of the components is a gas, is H2 gas. And under standard conditions, this H2 gas has a pressure of one bar or one atmosphere. And the concentration of H plus ions is actually fairly large, one mole per liter. This is the standard concentration, right? Ensures that the half cell is at standard state. At the platinum electrode is where the electron transfer actually occurs. So electrons come from the H2 and go into the platinum and out the cell and leave behind H+. Or as we're seeing it here, we're actually seeing the opposite process, H+, picking up electrons from the platinum surface to form H2. What actually happens depends on the potential of the half cell connected to the Xi relative to the Xi itself, whether it's positive or negative. But the basic idea here is the reduction of protons to dihydrogen or the oxidation of dihydrogens to protons. All right, and what we can do is connect this up with any old half cell, measure the potential of the resulting galvanic cell, and this gives us a measure of the potential of our half cell of interest with respect to the Xi, which we define as having a potential of zero, regardless of whether reduction or oxidation is happening physically inside this cell. One of the beauties of defining the sheet right here. So there you go, the standard hydrogen electrode, key to thinking about this process of measuring potentials conceptually. So again, we think about the sheet as our standard half cell. I'm gonna kind of represent it like this. And we can imagine connecting any old half cell of interest to the sheet. And let's represent that half cell of interest as X. It's going to involve at least two components, the reduced form and the oxidized form of whatever goes into the cell, but let's just call it X. We connect these up. We use a salt bridge, all of the standard galvanic cell stuff, and then we measure the potential difference here between the two essentially wires coming out of the half cells and this gives a measure of the standard potential of X. Now we think of the Xi as the anode side conventionally for this. In other words, we think of the Xi as undergoing oxidation here. This is gonna be important a little bit later. This is why we think about connecting the positive lead of the voltmeter to X. This treats X as the cathode and the negative lead to the Xi, which treats the Xi as the anode. When we do that, the voltage displayed is the standard reduction potential E not X for the half cell X. And again, that half cell is gonna involve the reduced component and an oxidized component, something like copper metal and copper two plus, lead metal and lead two plus, or even something like oxalate anion and carbon dioxide, where oxalate is the reduced form of carbon dioxide. Here's an example of this in action. When we hook up the Xi to the copper, copper two electrode, and we measure the voltage of the resulting galvanic cell, we get a result of 0 0.337 volts. Notice that spontaneously, when we hook up this cell, electrons flow from the Xi into the copper electrode. And so the copper electrode here is the cathode. This is where reduction is occurring. We can see that here with copper two plus ions depositing on the copper metal as additional copper metal. And oxidation is occurring in the Xi as H2 is converted into 2H plus and electrons head up the wire and out that half cell. This is what happens spontaneously when you hook up a copper half cell to the sheet. So the measured voltage is positive since electrons are flowing from the sheet into the half cell of interest. And the energy, we could say, with which they're flowing is 0.337 volts 
relative to the standard Xi potential of zero volts. And notice here as well, we're at standard state in both half cells, one molar H plus, one atmosphere H2, and one molar copper two plus. And the temperature is 298 Kelvin. And temperature does exert effect on an effect on cell potential that we'll encounter later.